Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am excited because we are going to be doing another book review for one of my most anticipated reads of 2022. Um, March has had a lot of books released. I think there's three books that came out in March. One actually comes out today, so I have to order that, I just realized. Um, that's the new Camilla Sten book. But yeah, three novels came out in March uh, that were on my most anticipated to read of 2022 list. If you haven't seen that, I have an entire video on all of the books that are coming out this year that I cannot wait to read. And it includes The Ravenous Dead by the lovely Darcy Coates. For those of you guys who do not know, um, I talk about Darcy Coates a lot on my channel. She is a queen of cozy horror. She writes a very, very distinct type of horror borderlining on kind of cute and campy with some truly truly terrifying scenes and imagery thrown in between um the ravenous dead is the sequel to her 2021 novel the whispering dead that i thoroughly enjoyed i believe this was a four star read for me i love this cover i actually love both of these together they look great um, and this is a part of a trilogy. Now, I am usually not a fan of series at all, but I did really enjoy The Whispering Dead. I really like Darcy Coates' writing, and I was really drawn in by the three main characters in The Whispering Dead, Kira, Mason, and Zoe. All three do make appearances in The Ravenous Dead. Um, pretty much immediately. <laughs> um, the Ravenous Dead takes place, I believe, 36 hours after the conclusion of The Whispering Dead, which blew my mind because that means the entire plot of this entire series so far has only spanned like two weeks, but it feels like it's been so much longer because obviously I've had The Whispering Dead now for a year and have just gotten through this. But we'll read the back of the book. I don't think there are too, too many... Um, I don't think there are too, too many spoilers on the back of this. I'm going to read it, but just in case you want to skip ahead because you haven't read The Whispering Dead yet, um, note, you, like, you totally can, but I don't really think there's that many spoilers to what happens to The Whispering Dead in this. Kira, hired as Blightly Graveyard's new groundskeeper, lives surrounded by the dead. They watch her through the fog. They wordlessly cry out. They've been desperately waiting for help moving on, and only Kira can hear them. But not every restless spirit wants to be saved. Sometimes the dead hate the living too much to find peace. As Kira struggles to uncover the tangled histories of some of the graveyard's oldest denizens, danger seeps from the darkest edges of the forest. A vicious serial killer was interred among the trees decades before, his spirit twisted by his violent nature. He's furious, ravenous, and when Kira unwittingly answers his call, she may just seal her fate as his final intended victim. So the first thing I want to say about this book is that you cannot read this book as a standalone. Um, I know sometimes you can with series, especially like the Harry Holy series, but these have to be read in sequence, I think. A lot of stuff that happens in The Whispering Dead does come back um, in The Rabbitus Dead, but in a really, really cool and unique way. Um, maybe it's not that unique since I, you know, don't really read that many series, but a lot of really weird minor plot points that happened in The Whispering Dead that I was kind of like, that's an interesting scene to throw in. That seemed kind of useless. Becomes very important in The Ravenous Dead. And I think one of the things that was most notable for me is there's a character introduced in The Whispering Dead um, named Harry, who I was really interested to read about. And then he just kind of doesn't ever show his face again in The Whispering Dead. Um, is actually quite um, important in The Ravenous Dead. So that made me really, really happy. And I'm really interested to see and learn more about him. I thought he was a very interesting um, character. He's a little bit of a stereotype, but I kind of liked how he did it. Um, and then obviously we get more of Kira and her new friendships with Mason and Zoe. This, I think, is a very, very strong sequel. I will say I don't think I liked it as much as The Whispering Dead. Um, it felt a little scattered at parts. I feel like Darcy Coates is having... Um, not necessarily an issue, but more of like a structure problem where her first book, The Whispering Dead, starts off with this crazy mystery. We don't know why Kira is where she is. We don't know why she's lost her memories. This is like the opening chapter of the book, so I'm not ruining anything for you guys. Um, and there's like men chasing her. And that's how she discovers this small town of Blighty. And then we never really hear about these men again. And the book just ends, right? And it's a series, so I get it. And my biggest problem with The Whispering Dead um, was that we don't learn anything about where she came from or who these men are. And I thought in The Ravenous Dead they would obviously want to introduce more about it, and they do. 
but they kind of just plop it in the dead center of the book like here's another snippet of the mystery try and figure it out and it's just like not enough to make me like interested in what's going on like they just kind of teased what they teased in the whispering dead again we get maybe just a little bit more information about who these people are but just not enough to satisfy me i don't know the i don't need the full answers but i just thought it was weird and it's odd that it's just smack dab in the dead center of the plot of the ravenous dead and it kind of takes the story on this like just like 90 degree turn into a completely different direction and then it turns right back um and so it was just very jarring, I would say. Like, I'm very interested in unraveling this mystery about where Kira comes from, and I like kind of like the hints that Darcy Coates threw out, but I would have liked more of it. Um, I will say that I think this time around, Darcy Coates maybe played up Zoe and Mason's like quirky characteristics almost to like absurdity. Like, I feel like in The Whispering Dead, Mason was like this kind of reserved, concerned friend who may or may not have like a crush. And then Zoe is kind of this like over the top conspiracy theorist. And they're fun and they're tangible and they're real. And I feel like in The Ravenous Dead, maybe because now they know Kira better and the reader knows these characters better, they became almost caricatured. Like, Mason was just overly concerned with everything, everything that happened. He had to go and be right there and fix it and handle it immediately. And Zoe was just so over the top in her exclamations that it just felt really, really jarring. And not to say that I didn't like them as characters, but I just felt that they felt more real in The Whispering Dead and they felt more over the top in The Ravenous Dead. Um, so those aside... Mm, I have one other major critique. Kira is turning into main character syndrome where I feel like she just reads like the focal point of the plot but has no real depth to her and she makes a lot of arrogant um, decisions. Not necessarily that she's an arrogant person but a lot of like her mentality is the world revolves around me and the problems that I might cause people so I need to fix them without thinking rationally. And so she just does a lot of stupid things that put herself and her friends in danger constantly and there's just no consequences for it. Like she's just constantly like, whoops, I thought that was the right thing to do, but lucky me, like everything turned out okay. So she just felt very like cliche main character and I just feel like she doesn't have any other depth to her. No, granted, I'm being very, very harsh on this book. This is a four star read for me. I liked this book quite a lot. I read it in like three days. I liked it, the vast majority of the plot. I thought it was cool. I thought it was interesting. I love that we're getting to learn more and more about the the powers that Kira has and how ghosts function in this world. I think introducing different types of ghosts and different ways that these ghosts interact with the living is really cool. It's very unique. It's fun. It's creepy. Um, and it's, it's, it sets up for the twist at the end of this book that I didn't see coming and don't think was needed. Um, like, the twist at the end of this book really made me be like, what? And then I just kind of sat about, sat and thought about it and was like, I see what Darcy Coates tried to do, but it just didn't stick the landing. Like, it wasn't necessary. Um, like, the book could have ended without the twist and it wouldn't have changed anything except for the fact that now I'm just kind of like eh, I could have done without that you know like it didn't, it didn't need to happen um so yes but is this a good sequel this is a great follow-up I really like it I really like the continuation of what happened in The Whispering Dead I love to see how Kira and Mason and Zoe are interacting I'm very very happy that um Harry has been given a larger part in this story I hope they continue to use him I think he's a really interesting character I like how everything is kind of weaving together with the small town hysteria and the small town secrets. I really love the small town setting. I love the cottage setting of the groundskeeper's cottage in the graveyard. I love it being connected to the church. I love the weird parallels between Kira's powers and the undead to Adage, the pastor, and his like uh, religious views on life. I think it's a really interesting way to meld the two, and I think Darcy Coates does it in a really cool way, um, and in a really tasteful way. Um, so, and I, I just, I don't know, there's just something really pleasant about it. And again, this is a very 
cozy story. Like I read it and I wanted to curl up with the blanket and drink a cup of tea as I was reading it. But it does have some pretty scary images and it has some pretty disturbing scenes in it. This book deals um, with the ghost of a serial killer and when uh, Kira looks into his past, it is very dark, it is very gruesome, it is very upsetting, as Darcy Coates is known to do. She will always have one or two very disturbing, dark, vivid scenes in her novels and then everything will kind of close up with a really cool happy ending and you kind of feel good about yourself after reading something scary which you don't get a lot in horror hence me giving it the title of cozy horror so yes i like the rabbit is dead quite a lot i think it is a fun follow-up to the whispering dead i do not think it is as good as the whispering dead even though i believe they're both four stars this is definitely a lower four star but it's fun i liked the characters and i will definitely read the final book in the trilogy to see where it goes Again, this is just a fun, cozy horror read. There's not too much substance in here. There's no, like, crazy underlying commentary. This is just a fun horror story with a happy ending. Um, and I like the mystery in it. Um, the characters, again, I hope they get toned down or a little bit more refined or fleshed out, um, you could say, because they all feel kind of like one-trick ponies at the moment, which they didn't in The Whispering Dead. Um, but I am very interested to see where the rest of the story goes and to finally get answers to who Kira is and why she is there. But yeah, that is all that I have for you guys today. As always, I post every Monday and Thursday, sometimes on Saturdays. And if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. And I will catch you all in the next one. Mwah.